At Aspendale Primary School, we're really proud to be a community of learners. We've always maintained fairly high student attitudes to school data, but as a high achieving school, we don't want to just sit on that. We always strive to improve. One of the questions that got us thinking about student voice was when our CEO came out and said, you know, your students look like they are engaged, but are they really engaged? Are they cognitively engaged or are they just compliant? So the voice project was developed to work out a way that we could provide an authentic vehicle for our students to co-design with our teachers' units of inquiry. In the early stages of the project, we conducted ethnography, even with our Year 1 students right up to Year 6. Our feedback from our students and our teachers as well that our units of inquiry are currently quite teacher directed. We had teachers that said, oh, this unit of inquiry didn't work well in previous years. Let's get someone else's input. and." What, a better, what better person than the students to get their input to say, this is what works for us and this is how we like to learn and this is what we're interested in learning. So the voice meetings in year one, we try and make it so that it's a bit of a theatrical event. We, I think if small children think it's a big thing, they really see the importance of it and are more willing to give more of themselves. So we always take them down to the conference room or into the staff room where it's just the big tables, the big chairs. They feel like they're people in an office and almost like adults themselves. And then we pose a question. Normally we start with something quite generally that the children are familiar with. So we talk about the ways they like to learn. Um, and we always get them to turn and talk to the person next to them. Teachers will listen in on that and kind of pick up ideas because sometimes with younger students, by the time they get to sharing, they forget what it is they've said and discussed. So it's good for them to have an adult just listening in so that they can prompt when we're then discussing. So all the kids go into the conference room and some of the um, teachers go in and then we say how we want to learn and then they write it down on a big piece of paper. And we always have a second adult who's scribing and it's really important that the kids see that every idea is written down and we say quite openly, you know, we're going to write down all your ideas, we're going to put your name next to it so we can remember who it is. And we've also made sure that we've been really explicit in making sure that the kids can see where their ideas have been used. So in our lessons, if we use a student idea, we'll put their photo and we'll put their idea in a thought bubble onto our flip chart so the kids can see and as a whole cohort they can see, oh yeah, that, that person's idea, they want wanted to learn about materials and the teachers are actually listening to them um, and now I can see their idea and the pride in a kid when they see their face on the board is amazing and the other kids feed off of that. When I was talking to the teacher it kind of felt like I was the teacher and I could like you could say whatever you want to do we can learn about whatever we want to learn. It makes me feel like happy and something I actually want to learn about, like not some stuff I don't want to learn about and I already know about it. This project has really enabled our teachers and students uh, an authentic opportunity to collaborate together um, and really enhance student agency across the school, but I guess most of all empower our students for the future. Our teachers that were involved were also able to use you know, anecdotal evidence and what some of the students had said about the voice session, which was really empowering for the other teachers to hear that, hey, this has had an impact. This has not only made our units of inquiry better, but it's improved our level of student engagement and our kids are feeling great about it. Their self-worth is has increased and they're, they're engaged and they've got buy-in. It makes me feel really happy and good because I know that my ideas like mean something. It's not like, oh, you have an idea, never mind. It's like, you have an idea, we'll do our best to make that actually come to life or be real. Once it was presented to the staff, everyone developed their own model with the non-negotiables or the key elements, but it, there was, we allowed for variation and I think that was really important, allowing teams or that teacher voice or that teacher agency to say, you can make this look to suit your cohort, it doesn't have to look identical across each level. Um, but these are the key elements that we've found from trialling it that really work and that we encourage you to embed these as part of your voice sessions because you'll get deeper responses from your students made me feel nice to know that I was getting heard and having an input in what I'm doing. Because usually before voice committees were a thing, I had no say in what I was doing. I mean, I still loved the work, but it just feels really nice now to know that I had an input in it and this is what I wanted to do. So our next steps include making sure we're embedding across all of the year levels. We will constantly use our non-negotiables document as a working document to add or edit and change things to 
define how the voice looks. It's changed a lot from how it, how it first started to how it is now and I can see it will continue to evolve as we continue to trial it um, and pick up more ideas from other students and other teachers across the whole school.